Welcome to Mark Bayeski YouTube channel, guys. We're going to talk about um, healing animals today. Um, should be uh, interesting, should be exciting, should be fun. And um, we have an animal here today. And a beautiful soul. <laughs> so, hey, do you mind if I use you as a guinea pig? I'm not a guinea pig. <laughs> hey, did you hear the one about the giraffe that fell down drunk in a bar? The bartender said to the guy, oh, you can't leave that lion there. And he said, he's not a lion, he's a giraffe. <laughs> Come on, terrible jokes. Okay then, let's talk about healing. Let's talk about how to heal animals. First thing you need to know about animals is that they're super, 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 super sensitive which means that they digest, they feel everything 10 times more than you. They smell things far more stronger than humans do. They, their sense of hearing, all their senses are a thousand times more powerful than ours. But they also have something which is super magical and that's psychic abilities. Because dogs don't really talk to each other that much. They might bark every now and again, but their real senses are their nose uh, as they smell another dog. And they speak to each other via frequency, energy, which they admit. I know, I'm boring, I know. Just bear with me. You'll be rewarded. <laughs> you will be rewarded, I promise. So like babies and children which haven't been contaminated by the the bs outside children also have that great ability of attuning feeling they're sensitives they're uh, empaths and they can feel they have this great ability of attuning to mum and dads and um, sometimes mums have the ability to attune to their children too and sometimes they just know something that their, their, their fathers don't know. Women have a, a great energy of um, smell. They've got a great sense of smell. They can smell things where guys are going, I can't smell anything. <laughs> well, doggies, times that by a uh, hundred, doggies can smell everything. And um, through that smell, there's a conversation. So bearing that in your mind, keeping that in your mind, Everything that you do on an energetic level is very powerful. So the first thing I would say is when you work on, say, an animal, especially a little doggy like this, is when you give energy healing, don't keep your hand in one place for too long because most dogs don't like that. So my secret is, is just, you can't see, but just at the back of my hand, I'll show you now as I turn, I'm gently stroking. So if you're doing the healing session, stroke, stroke. You see how quickly she stopped then and moved? It only takes a matter of seconds and minutes to heal your doggy because they're so open to energy. So as I'm healing, I stroke and give energy at the same time. Never stroke or never go to a dog's head because well, you wouldn't like it, would you? So, um, this is where I normally start, down here, underneath, and then I kind of work my way up until I get to the head. You don't need to do the front so much as the back. They don't need their third eye opening. It's already opened. So, I like to work at the back here. And again, massaging or gently stroking at the same time as giving healing is a really good technique because you're taking the um, emphasis off the healing but you'll soon see the doggy wants to turn away because she's had enough of the energy if your dog is very poorly then they'll fall asleep with it and you can continue doing it for an hour but if a dog's fairly healthy um, I would say about five five minutes maximum and that's my understanding I like to go down on a level with um, any animal that I haven't met before. So when the phone rings and somebody says, I've got a dog that I'd like you to come and heal. This was when I used to be a full-time healer. Um, 
I used to go with the um, with a, a, a thought that you just never know the dog could bite you so what I used to do is never introduce myself to the dog only talk to the owner and and not ignore the dog but just be in full conversation with the owner and I'd ask the owner to sit down on the floor meaning that the, the dog ate would be on the same level as as we were which makes it more comfortable and they don't feel threatened when you look down on a dog sometimes they can feel a bit threatened so it's good to get down on the floor and then continue your conversation and you'll find that the dog the dog is very nosy and wants to say hello and um, I let them come over to me so if they do I let them smell me first so I'll still continue the conversation I won't make eye contact until the doggy insists that I pay attention then I give the doggy my time and attention but at the same time talking to the client so not too much but just enough at that point um, the doggy may do this with, with its nose to say I want you to now uh, stroke me um, and at that point you can begin the healing work and um, as you're speaking to your client and um, stroking the doggy like I've just said you'll um, you'll feel that your hand will be drawn and pulled to the right place it's been many occasions that the doggy tells me where to go so what happens is the doggy will find my hand and move my hand to the place where it needs healing also you I've seen many good healers lie down with the, the doggy so they kind of pretend to fall asleep together as they're giving the healing session that's something that I used to do as well um, that would be normally after the second and third uh, time I, I, I go some doggies uh, and we could be talking about any animals I used to work on horses pedigrees uh, uh, champion world champion horses I worked on many different types of beautiful four-legged friends and for me it's important that they get to trust you first once that trust comes then they, they, they're just gonna be happy they're just gonna be oh, it's just gonna be a normal life to them they're not gonna feel threatened they're not gonna feel negative and that means that they're open to receiving very very quickly when your doggy is healthy the doggy heals you when the doggy needs a little bit of help they'll you know they often come and just want a little bit of energy sometimes doggies become very ill and sick and therefore you give them a little bit more energy a little bit more time um, these are the things that I work upon Whenever working on the stomach, be extremely careful because some uh, doggies are extremely sensitive there. So try to work on an energetic frequency where you are a little bit further away. So you know, you're working on this kind of level rather than this kind of level, but only when your doggy is comfortable and confident with you, um, only when the doggy is trusting of you. So you can work like this and your doggy won't move or, or won't do anything, they'll trust you, you know, they'll trust you, whatever you're doing. So that trust is important. So um, I like to work on the back. A lot of dogs have problems on their back. Um, and I also like to work at the side of the stomach. So I like to place my hands uh, very close to the side of the stomach. Again, at the back of the head, never the front of the head. I don't mind going down to the, the chest area and just gently rubbing the chest area like this. So you're rubbing and giving healing at the same time. Remember your hands out to receive. Okay, so as I'm giving her a little bit of healing now. She's very strong. She's got a great energy. So there's not much healing needs to be given. Not much uh, energy needs to be given. She's she's already got amazing energy. So just a few seconds, a minute or so is fine. Um, and that's it really. Always keep the water on hand so they've always got water because after a healing session they like to drink plenty of water. 
they seem to just know that water is important after a healing session which it, it absolutely is I think that's it really it's not too difficult um, when it comes to cats the one thing that I kind of insisted at the beginning is that if the cat is vulnerable to uh, scratching if it's if it has a, um, a kind of bite then I would just ask my client to put the cat into a cat basket and I would do the energy work um, when they're in the cat basket and uh, many a times cats fall asleep when you start the energy work you just need to place your hands around the basket and send good energy and that's fine I think that's the easiest way with cats because cats are extremely um, uh, sense they are extremely sensitive I think probably a little bit more sensitive than than dogs and they're uh, they're pretty sharp they're like you know what they're, they're <laughs> I always say this I, I have never stopped saying it you know a long time ago in the Egyptian times cats were revered as gods and they still know it till this day <laughs> uh, they really do anyway guys that's it it's um my little uh, gift to you to share on uh, healing your animal it's um, your pet your soul friend it's very important that you keep this um, this kind of energy up so you're maintaining their energy you're cleansing them and clearing them by giving this kind of energy pure energy healing and it keeps them healthy and there's a lot of longevity attached to this as well happiness and um, physical um, it really does help keeps the uh, the sea at bay um, the big C and uh, yeah it's great okay I don't really know what to do with her now she's like flopped out boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I'm just gonna pop her here there you go thank you for that you've been a great model thank you very much you've been a brilliant model and we hope to see you again soon <laughs> she's a slow snowflake Okay, guys, thank you so much for going to markbayeski.com and buying your authentic crystals, oils, incense, and now teas. Thank you. See you there.